White Christmas. It's probably one of the most recognizable songs at Christmas time. It's White Christmas by Bing Crosby. In fact, I enjoy bursting into that song spontaneously as I walk around the house. My kids love it. <laughs> at least that's what I tell myself. Christmas Day, 1941, it came 18 days after the devastating attack on Pearl Harbor. More than 2,400 Americans were killed that day, another 1,000 were wounded. The day after the assault, FDR, the president at the time, asked Congress to declare war on Japan, and they did just that immediately. The nation was at war, and the nation would be at war on Christmas in 1941. So on Christmas night, 1941, Bing sang that song for the first time. And in minutes, people forgot the tragedy, and their minds drifted into the beautiful lyrics of I'm Dreaming of a White Christmas, which sort of ushers in the cheer of the season. The words of that song bring Christmas images to mind, flickering fires, twinkling trees, sugar cookies baking in the oven. It's the white in Christmas, there's an inference here of snow, it's the white in Christmas that evokes so many fond seasonal memories for people. And white snow really, for the believer in Jesus Christ, could stir up thoughts in our minds about the true meaning of Christmas. The true meaning of Christmas. Christ in Christmas. So let's consider the relationship of snow, really, to the arrival of the Messiah. White snow and the truth about Jesus Christ, what is the correlation? Well, I've settled on four qualities of snow, each quality captured in a word. And each word relates a truth about the Lord Jesus Christ. And you know what? Each word really relates to one part of our four-part series titled The Colors of Christmas. It's kind of interesting how it all kind of comes together. First word I'd like for us to consider is the word pure. Pure. Of course, this, this should conjure up the image of white in our minds. A snow crystal's large number of reflective surfaces give it a white appearance as it reflects pure light. Now, I grew up in central New York State, and up where I was born and raised, we measure snow in feet, not in inches. And, um, and when it is really bearing down, lake effect snow bearing down, as it is right now in my hometown, as the lake effect snow bears down, the sky, it, it, it becomes bright outside. It is totally bright outside. And that's because of the pure light that is being reflected on all of those snow crystals. And I can remember judging whether or not I was going to have school the next day based on whether or not the sky was bright at night in the midst of a snowstorm. But maybe snow can help us to be reminded of the one whose birth we remember each year. Also consider the prophet Daniel who spoke of the Ancient of Days. He described in Daniel chapter 7 verse 9 this very thing and he mentions the word snow. Chapter 7 verse 9 he talks about the Ancient of Days. And in the midst of this prophecy, he says, as I looked, this is in the midst of Daniel's vision of the four beasts, as I looked, thrones were placed, and the Ancient of Days took his seat, his clothing was white as snow, and the hair of his head like pure wool. Of course, he's speaking of God Almighty. So we see, perhaps, at this Christmas season, Incarnate God being Jesus in a manger, it sort of echoes the purity of newly fallen snow. It is because of Jesus Christ, God the Son, the baby in the manger who would go to the cross of Calvary and die, 
It is because of the purity of that sacrifice, Jesus Christ, that we can have forgiveness of sin. As his blood was shed on Calvary's tree, it makes us pure white like pure snow so that we can enter into God's heaven. I was reminded of David who was strained by the blackness of his sin. You think of a stark contrast to the purity of white. David, after he had sinned, was strained by the, the, his own sin and he cried out to God, Wash me and I shall be whiter than snow. Well, that would be realized, David's plea would be realized in the shed blood of Jesus Christ, which washes us who believe whiter than snow. God took our scarlet sins and made them as white as snow. That provision was fulfilled in the birth and the subsequent death of the Lord Jesus Christ. So we see the, the, the word pure invokes in our minds the color white. And that's what we're focusing here on tonight. But there's also another quality of, of snow, and it's, it's this. It's life-giving. Snow is life-giving. You might wonder, well, I don't know about that. I mean, for me, snow is debilitating, not life-giving. Well, like snow, Jesus brings new life. Let me explain. Snow falls but when that snow thaws and that snow melts, that snow soaks the earth and it prepares the ground for an explosion of new life that comes every spring. And so if you're really tired of the snow that falls and the cold weather, we can have hope because we understand that that snow is going to melt and that snow is going to moisten the ground, and that snow is going to give way to springtime when we see new life literally springing up out of the ground. Isaiah chapter 55 also speaks to this truth. Isaiah chapter 55, verses 10 and 11. Listen. For as the rain and the snow come down from heaven... And do not return there, but water the earth, making it bring forth and sprout, giving seed to the sower and bread to the eater. Listen, this is a biblical concept. Verse 11. So shall my word be that goes out from my mouth. It shall not return to me empty, but it shall accomplish that which I purpose and shall succeed in the thing for which I sent it. God's word is life. God's word is life-giving. Matthew chapter 1, verse 21. I read this verse a few moments ago. Matthew chapter 1, verse 21. Here's what it says. If we are to be reminded, She will bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus. Why? For he shall save his people from their sins by the word which comes afresh to us now by the power of Jesus Christ and his word we know that we are saved and made whole for those who believe Jesus and his word is life-giving and we know that green represents new life Andrew preached a message on the color green to kick off this whole series. So when we think about pure white and snow, we should also remember that snow when it thaws and melts brings life. It brings new life every spring, just as the word of God brings life and life eternal. The third word that I think of as it involves snow is silent we're going to be singing a song silent night in just a few moments but i think of the word silent because like the silence of falling snow 
I think we should be moved to silence as we consider the gift of God's one and only Son, Jesus Christ. We should be moved to silence. Snow does not make a sound as it falls thousands of feet from the sky and just kind of drifts down to the earth. It lands there and there's no sound when it hits the ground either. Perhaps this can serve as a reminder to us that Christmas is a time when we can block out the noise of the world for at least a day. For at least a day, we can block out the noise of the world. You know, as I think about the silence of snow and how we should be moved to silence as we consider the gift of God's Son, I was also reminded of uh, several years ago, pre-children, 1995, there was a blizzard in Bloomfield, New Jersey, and I got myself trapped at my uh, future wife's parents' house, and, um, and it was Broad Street in Bloomfield is, is very busy, but because of that, that snow that was falling and the sky that was bright because of all of the snow that evening, Cindy and I went out into the middle of Broad Street and laid down and we made snow angels. And I'm telling you, it was so peaceful and serene. Little did we know we would have six kids and the peaceful, serene. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. There's still peacefulness and there's still serenity. But listen, laying down in the middle of Broad Street was not something you could do except for a, a snowstorm with thousands, if not millions of snowflakes just fluttering down and landing on the ground that calming, serene, peaceful occasion is really what I'm talking about right now. You know, the day is coming when all the earth will keep silence before Almighty God. Habakkuk chapter 2, verse 20, we know this promise even now. The Lord is in his holy temple. Let all the earth keep silence before him. You know, this really speaks to me about the color gold that Pastor Jimmy preached on. The color gold because he asked us the question, who is the Lord of your life? For those who believe in Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, the color gold speaks of the King of kings and the Lord of lords. When at the name of Jesus, every knee will bow and every tongue confess that he is Lord. Who's the Lord of your life? Jesus was born into this world to be judged in our place. Rather than being silent in fear of judgment, we should be moved to silence at Christmas because of God's unspeakable Christmas gift, which is salvation in the Lord Jesus Christ. Finally, the fourth word is unique. Snowflakes are unique. Scientists tell us that no two snowflakes are alike. And this reminds us of the uniqueness of each person whom God's unique son came to save. And of course, it reminds us, as I just said, of the unique son of God. Unique because he was the only one that would be an acceptable sacrifice to pay the penalty for your sin and my sin. It had to be a sinless lamb without spot, without blemish. Jesus Christ is the unique son of God who came to save. Our Lord was the only sacrifice that could satisfy God's wrath against sin. A perfect, without blemish, spotless lamb. Acts chapter 4 verse 12 and there is no other name under heaven given among men. No other name given among men by which we must be saved. That speaks of the uniqueness of the Lord Jesus Christ. The uniqueness of every Christmas snowflake speaks of the uniqueness of our God and his one and only Son. 
If you have your bulletin, you can see printed on the back. There are some very important verses, and I'm going to take two from this list. Listen, here's the truth. God provided a way of salvation and forgiveness when he sent his son to die for our sins. Romans chapter 5, verse 8. God demonstrates his own love toward us in this. While we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. And Romans chapter 6, verse 23. How did he pay? How did he die for us? Well, he paid the penalty for our sins when he died on the cross. Because Romans chapter 6, verse 23 says, For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. If you can't grasp the color that I'm inferring at this point, then I'll just tell you it's red. Red is the color of the shed blood of Jesus Christ, whose blood ran down the cross, which makes us as white as snow, had it not been for the sacrifice of Jesus upon Calvary's tree and a subsequent rising from the dead on the third day, there would be no eternity for any one of us. There would be no Christmas. Quite simply, without Jesus, we would have no point in gathering together here in this celebratory manner concerning Christmas time. Jesus is the unique Son of God, God the Son, the only sacrifice that could take away the sins of the world. The truth is, is that a white Christmas is not dependent upon snow. Whether we have snow or not, when we celebrate Emmanuel, God with us, the one who was born to live and to die and to come again for us, it'll be, listen, a uniquely white Christmas of new life, of purity, and of silent awe as we consider this most precious gift of God. I trust that your Christmas will be merry and bright because of the radiant light of the King of Kings who has indwelt your heart. Let's pray together. Father in heaven, we thank you for your son, Jesus, whom we gather together tonight to celebrate his birth. But we know that Jesus did not stay as a little baby in a manger, but rather he grew up into manhood, born of the Holy Spirit in the virgin womb of a woman named Mary who lived out his days from the point of birth until, the, uh, until now, 100% sinless, the unique Son of God, who makes us pure because of his shed blood on Calvary's tree. And Father, we thank you for the life that we have in Christ Jesus. But if there be anyone here tonight who does not know you as, as their personal Lord and Savior, who, who knows beyond a shadow of a doubt that they will live for eternity in your perfect heaven, I just pray that they would not leave here tonight without, without bowing to the King of kings and the Lord of lords, Jesus Christ, Emmanuel, God with us. I thank you for this time, and I thank you for your, for your son, Jesus, in whose name we pray these things. Amen.